Superintendent. Good afternoon. On the 1st of October this year, South Australian Police launched Operation Safe Hills. Safe Hills deliberately targets dangerous driving within the hills and environs. I'm here today to announce the results of the first month of that operation, which quite frankly I find staggering. During the, the beginning of the operation until this date, we've lost two lives on Adelaide Hills and Byron's roads. There's been 19, 19 lives lost on Adelaide Hills roads this year so far, which is quite incredible. Since the operation commenced, we have detected in excess of 2,500 people exceeding the speed limit by up to 29 kilometres an hour. We've detected 2,468 people travelling uh, at 29 kilometres an hour and above the posted speed limit. We've detected 45 people travelling between 30 and 44 kilometres above the posted speed limit. And incredulously, we've detected 10 people travelling at 45 or more over the posted speed limit. This behaviour is totally reckless, it's totally selfish, and it's totally unacceptable, and we won't tolerate it. I'm telling these people that want to go to the hills when the weather finds up and use it as a racetrack that you can expect to see Sapole heavily involved in the hill space between now and the end of April. There is no need for people to lose their lives or get seriously injured on our roads and this behaviour is totally unacceptable, it is reprehensible. Imagine if, that was, if one of the people impacted as a result of this selfish behaviour was somebody that you loved or cared about. That's what these people need to start thinking about. The penalties for exceeding the speed limit can be significant. You can lose your licence, you can have your vehicle impounded, or worse, if you hit somebody and hurt them, or you kill somebody, you're looking at significant periods of imprisonment. So I'm telling you, stop this behaviour. Of the people detected, are they mostly locals or visitors or is it pretty well spread even? Unfortunately, it's a, it's a mix of uh, locals and people foreign to the areas. Just seems people think it's a good idea to get on their motorbike or to get into their car and go and test their ability out on Hills Roads, which as we all know, are heavily populated with people going about their daily business or going to recreational spots and doing various things. So it's extremely dangerous. Of the 19 lives lost on the Hills Roads this year, do we know the breakdown of the causes of those fatalities? Not specifically, but as I said to you, 24 lives lost this year, we attribute directly to people exceeding the speed limit. And as I've said many times, lives lost and serious injuries on our roads are largely preventable. So there's 24 people that made a conscious decision to drive in a dangerous manner that resulted in them losing their lives. Can you talk to us a little bit about the operation itself, how many officers you've got up in the hills over the last month? I'm not going to give you the detail about how many people we've got. We've got a mixture of police resources up there. We've got cars, we've got motorbikes, we've got uh, other assets up there, some covert assets you wouldn't necessarily be aware about, but you will be aware when we come knocking on your door and we impound your car and we issue you with an immediate loss of licence or worse. So you're capturing these people on cameras and then they're giving them some in due course? We're capturing these people in a, in a range of ways, um, but certainly we do have cameras up there and some of the cameras we have up there are covert cameras. So, so you you've got the area that's targeted, is that the Adelaide Hills generally or? It's the Adelaide Hills space, which is a significant geographical area. If you think you're talking down at, um, from Victor Harbour through McLaren Vale, right through to the Barossa Valley, through to Clare. So it's a significant area. Uh, just those 10 people caught speeding 45 kilometres more over the speed limit. I mean, how, how you hear about these things, but how frustrating is it for you, obviously, after all the messaging you guys are putting out there as well? It's extremely frustrating because people don't need to die on our roads. And it's extremely uh, heartbreaking because my people are the people that have to go to these collisions, they have to do the investigation, and then they have to deal with the families that are left behind. And that's just a tragedy. Are these hoodings generally younger drivers or...? Unfortunately, again, it's a mixture. Um, it, there's people in their, in their midlife that are up there driving like this and riding like this. We've seen a number of motorcyclists lose their lives this year on the roads, the two that have died this month, motorcyclists. What's your message for those who might be heading up and may not be used to the country roads in our hills? Look, motorcycle, motorcyclists are, are vulnerable road users. They need to understand that. Generally, if they have a collision, and they come off their motorbike, the consequences are going to be more significant than if you're driving a car, which is obvious. So ride to the conditions, ride to your ability and stay safe. Take responsibility for your actions. Uh, Bob, 
just on a specific crash, there was a stolen car that crashed into a tree at Salisbury this morning. I've just shown you earlier the division. I mean, can I just get your reaction to that as someone driver speeding, high speed, losing control, and I guess how lucky it was that no one else was injured as well? Yeah, it's just, it's senseless behaviour. The person's got no right to steal the car in the first place, but to then drive on a major arterial road at high speed, clearly out of control until he's impacted with a tree, is just reprehensible. And the victim actually left his car running in the driveway, um, and that's when the, the thief took it. I mean, do you have any word of warning for others that might just be ducking in quickly to sort of get an item and leaving their car running in the driveway? Clearly, it's something that you want to reconsider, I would suspect, that it's probably not a wise idea unless your vehicle's secured by other means to leave it running in the driveway. And the um, data that you've got about uh, uh, offending driver speeding, is that uh, any worse than uh, any other period you can recall, or was just um, the most recent statistics? Sorry, what was that? Is it just the most recent statistics that you've got, on, or are you seeing like a spike in this behaviour? Look, we target the hills and environs uh, annually. We adjust our plan depending on what the intelligence tells us, and what it's telling us at the moment is that there's a significant increased risk between the months of October and April next year. And as I said, make no mistake, we will be on the on the roads, keeping people safe that are doing the right thing on our roads, which the majority of people do do. Um, in terms of the roads on the hills as well, are they sort of more precarious than other areas, even more alarming to people hitting speeds and on these sort of windy roads? It is. And as I said earlier, it's it's almost as if these people want to go up there and test their ability. Don't do it on public roads. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone.